Hey guys, Abhijit Manas here coming at you with video number three in the series of common uh, misconceptions related to the field of healthcare and physiotherapy. Uh, in this one, we are on misconception number six. If you haven't seen the first two, just go back onto my IGTV and you should see both of those there. They are not long videos, uh, but they do con uh, cover really common misconceptions or myths that have been perpetuated uh, just by repetition over the years. Uh, and and these, this list was uh, is based off things we hear from our patients every day in the office, from our friends and family, etc. So going on to uh, misconception number six is core exercises prevent back pain or um, doing core exercises will decrease the chances of injuries in the future. Now I want to make this point real quick you do require core strengthening. Core strengthening is basically core stiffness here and you definitely need it. It's an important part, especially when you are under high loads. For example, if you are a weightlifter, powerlifter, um, a construction worker, or just living, lifting some really heavy groceries on the floor, which basically is a position that you don't stay in all the time, right? Uh, in these positions, when you put your body in a bit of a precarious position to lift something heavy, you do need to create some core stiffness to protect and brace your spine at that point. However, while walking, sitting, you don't need a lot of that core stability to, to kind of protect you because there's really nothing happening. So doing exercises like front planks, dead, uh, side planks, dead bugs, V sits, any of those uh, with the hope that it will reduce your back pain is probably not correct because that probably was not the cause of your pain in the first place. I know a lot of uh, providers uh, still tend to believe this and you might have heard this from your provider, but things are changing one step, step at a time. Most of the providers are now uh, are up to date with the research and hopefully most of them are not saying this anymore. Uh, but having said that, uh, doing a lot of like planks or those exercises is not going to decrease your pain. Uh, the next misconception, misconception number seven, is arthritis is a life sentence. So this is one of the things we see all the time. Our patients come in and they say they have arthritis. Uh, we treat them, they get better. And, uh, and, and I, always, I always tell them at the end of the treatment session is, do you think I actually went inside your body? Like for example, if I work on somebody's knee, do you think I actually went inside your knee and treated your arthritis? Most likely not. Do you think after say four or five sessions of physio uh, that you went through uh, another x-ray, you think there'd be any changes in the x-ray? I'm pretty sure your x-ray would still pretty much look the same. However, a lot of people get better even though it's not like I'm treating anything inside your joint. So basically that's, that tells us that everything that we see in an image like an x-ray is only a very small part of the picture. And that's why I'd say go back to the previous videos where I talk about imaging uh, being a small part of the, the overall assessment. We treat images, uh, sorry, people, not images. So we are not treating x-ray sheets and MRI sheets. There's a whole lot. And we now know through a lot of latest research that pain is really complex and it can be from a bunch of reasons, not something that you just see on an x-ray. Uh, having said that, uh, arthritis is just that. It's wear and tear that you see in the body over the years in an x-ray. Now, the wear and tear in people can depend on uh, their fitness levels, the jobs they did, um, if they were standing or sitting for too long, if they generally were involved in sports or high intensity activities. There are a lot of reasons that could have caused this, um, caused the arthritis, but a lot of people live a pain-free life and if you put them through an x-ray you'll still find those changes in uh, arthritic changes in the spine which tells us uh, that generally arthritis is just a sign that your body ha has gone through some wear and tear but is not always the reason of pain uh, oftentimes again it's we are a bit guilty about this too as in the medical profession that we tend to use this term rather loosely and throw it around all the time. Like, oh, this could probably be because of your arthritis. Uh, and that's one of the things we need to do is better patient, patient education uh, to, to correct this, this misconception and myth that arthritis is the cause of most of your pain. 
Now, it's not as simple though, and it's a shorter video, but I'm generally talking about osteoarthritis. There's another kind of arthritis, which is the rheumatoid arthritis, which is an autoimmune disease, which is different, but not a lot of people have that, but most of us do have some form of osteoarthritis. So don't be scared of that. Find a provider who can help you and, and does not perpetuate this fear that you have arthritis and that's why you have the pain. Uh, let's rip this one out and I forgot to throw in the other one. So misconception number six and seven are out. Misconception or myth number eight are all headaches are migraines. Um, I know not everybody everybody believes that, but however, a lot of times people don't know that physiotherapists can help you with headaches. Um, and I am a, a, I'm a good example of that myself. I've had headaches for years now. And um, I've seen I've seen all kinds of doctors. I've been diagnosed with migraine headaches, sinusitis headaches, uh, cervicogenic headaches, uh, cluster he like all kinds of headaches. Uh, and I've been having this since I was younger. But only after I became a physio uh, that I realized that this was kind of coming out of my posture and my neck uh, and sustaining wrong positions for too long. Uh, so I have been working on my neck and it's gotten much better. Uh, and a lot of people have headaches which could be coming out from their could be coming from their neck uh, but they might feel like it's a migraine and the only intervention for that is medication uh, so i'm here to tell you that a lot of headaches do come from the neck i've written a few blogs about this too uh, certain positions that i like to get into to release some of that stress if if you are one of those people who are not sure if their headache is coming from their neck or from something else uh, do hit me up, send me a direct message, and I can send you some, some of the links of the positions and the, and the blogs that I've written about headaches, um, and hopefully that can help you. So once again, not all headaches are migraines. A lot of headaches can come, come from bad posture, from sitting in a hunched over position with your neck forward, and from a lot of issues from here, uh, and I'm being the prime example of that. So that is... Number eight. Hey, what's up guys? Part four of debunking common myths related to our field of physiotherapy and healthcare. Uh, so we are down to our last three and this is a uh, video number four. So if you haven't seen the, the other ones, please go back and see I have three more videos. Each have three common mistakes. So we've already covered eight common misconceptions. Uh, and let's get on with the next one. So stretching decreases injury. So again, the part of that blame lies with us as uh, medical professionals because we have been talking about this a lot that you need to stretch before and after every exercise and, and you generally have to be limber and loose. Uh, however, there have been multiple RCT researches which have shown that uh, Injury prediction is very complicated and a simple uh, saying something simple as stretching will decrease your injury chances or you'll not get injured because uh, you're stretching or you stretch so you should not get injured now is definitely wrong. This is not the only thing that can injure, cause injuries. Injuries can be caused because the muscles might not be or the body might not body might not be up for the task that is thrown at it. Uh, it could be because of actually not a lot of stiffness like which is almost like tightness so you don't have a lot of stiffness you lose and you lift something heavy and that's when your back kind of gives away so um, the the reasons can be a whole lot and so to say that stretching will decrease your chan chances of injury and and especially with athletes too right like say soccer players or whatever you tell them oh just stretch you know and that'll get things better is not true it's been debunked by by research uh, there are certain people who benefit out of stretching. There are certain people who are already super limber and, and uh, they, they probably don't require as much uh, stretching. So everybody's different. Um, if we were to follow the logic of stretching is can prevent uh, most of your injuries, then by that logic, mostly people who practiced a lot of yoga would never get injured. And uh, we do see a lot of people with um, yoga and other like people who are really flexible and limber but are still in pain. So big misconception, stretching is only a small 
portion of your general health and fitness and it does not predict uh, decrease or increase in injury um, and it is also not a solution to to recover from so if you something is tight stretch it that's not always the answer anyways that is the next one all right uh, excessive use of orthotics I put in orthotics for your feet but orthotics for everything right like throwing in orthotics under your foot because you have a flat foot um, using a, a, a back belt or a back brace to do the smallest things uh, like doing chores at home with light weights um, what else using sometimes using a lot of even if you're not injured using a lot of like bandaging or bracing or stuff like that around the area thinking that that would decrease the chances of injury these are all big misconceptions uh, orthot in fact the body is pretty smart so we only want to use orthotics if the body cannot figure out things on its own in other terms like if somebody has flat foot I'd rather have them do exercises to get their art stronger and their body resilient uh, than giving them the first advice of putting orthotic in there because guys remember if you throw an orthotic under uh, your foot your foot's not going to do anything because you already provided that medial art support now if you do not have that medial art support uh, if you wore a different shoe or because of a certain circumstance you did not have access to that your foot's not going to like that too much because you never trained your foot to be able to withstand the pressures of excessive pressure on the, the inside of your foot or a flat foot so we need to train for these things and we only use orthotics as a last resort or only as a temporary resort like a cervical collar could be a, a good example as well uh, a cervical collar should not be used for too long uh, and if it's really severe if you suspect some kind of uh, a trauma that could have injured important structures of the spine nerves blood vessels yeah of course you need to immobilize but apart from that if it's just a neck strain or something we don't need to keep a collar on for too long we don't need that excessive belt if you're only trying to bend and lift something like put our shoes on we don't need that belt uh, we only we don't need a orthotic support so misconceptions if you have more questions do hit me and I can talk about your individual problems uh, and give you certain ideas and uh, the last one to wrap this series up is disc bulges or disc herniations or slip discs are uh, the end game <laughs> so first of all uh, guys discs don't slip uh, they herniate so what happens with the disc is the the disc can bulge out okay and even if a disc bulge bulges out a lot of research like which I've covered before has told us that a bulging disc sometimes is not the cause of your pain it could be something else in fact a lot of healthy people who live a healthy lifestyle with no major episodes of low back pain can have a lot of bulging discs in their back so the disc bulge itself doesn't mean anything uh, now sometimes because of maybe repeated motions over and over say if you were you were in you were involved in work which required you to bend all the time to lift something up if you're in construction if you're a power lifter and you're I don't know deadlifting uh, like over 500 kilo like three four hundred kilos or something like that with those excessive loads on your spine you could probably blow your disc out and the disc is basically a small, uh, a small squishy um, cushion between your two vertebras of your spine and sometimes uh, the outer covering of that disc is harder and with those loads there can be a tear in the outer uh, covering and and the inside soft stuff of the of the disc can actually push out and compress on the nerve that can happen when it's when the injury is very severe however we don't see a lot of those we generally what we see is disc herniations or slight disc bulges uh, this does not mean that that you cannot have a fulfilling uh, pain-free life and that now that you have once had a disc bulge you have to deal with this throughout your life that is not true at all you can have a relatively uh, pain-free life and do most of your activities 
uh, and I say relatively, but I want to say, assure you that a uh, small disc bulges uh, are not a big concern when I see people. Of course, if you are at a stage where that that inner jelly uh, part of the the disc has actually bulged out, uh, that is probably a bit more serious and I'd be a little more concerned with that and there are interventions for that as well but for minor disc bulges I'm not too concerned and nor should you be so definitely find a provider uh, that can help you uh, guide you through this process and one of the one of the important things is when you're picking up a provider and it's very difficult for for patients to do that but you you want to you, you, you want to look for providers who empower you to, to get better and say that, hey, you know what, I only want to see you for this much time, but the main goal is that you don't have to come back to see me all the time. If you go to, uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of providers who are like that, a lot of healthcare practitioners, um, where they'll be like, you got to keep coming in, it looks pretty severe, they catastrophize your injuries and, and make it bigger than they are. So you want to be a bit careful about that and you want to find people who empower you to get back to whatever activity you're doing. Uh, if you go to a practitioner where they say that, oh, you know what, like they get you on a bed and all they're doing is just massaging your back and putting some heating pads and putting some electrical machines on and that's the only treatment that you've been receiving for the last five sessions, uh, I would probably look around somewhere else because you need to find somebody who can actually actually treat you and prepare you to to get better in activities that you do every day not just to feel better when you're lying down on a bed so that was the last one hopefully that provides you a bit of insight into this project if you have any questions hit me up again you can find me on abhijitminhas.com that's my Word, wordpress website you can find me on abhijitminhaspt on facebook and with the same handle on instagram Hope you have a good one. Bye.